I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. I'm joined today by New Brunswick musician Kathy Hutch. Thank you so much for being here today, Kathy. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I know you have some big news to share with viewers across New Brunswick, across Canada. I'd love for you to tell us what it is. Well, other than having two new singles out uh, in the last few months, one I just released last week, which I will play for you. Um, but I'm also being signed to a new record label uh, going tomorrow. And uh, so it's called Folked Up Records. <laughs> and so I'm pretty excited about that because that, uh, that will really help me get the music out there. Well, yeah. I feel like most people know you from playing live shows. Can you talk a little bit about how many you play per year? Uh, you've managed to make a living as a full-time musician, which is such a dream for so many people. How did you do it, and, and how often are you on the road? Well, you know what? It, uh, last year I played, I was booked for 128 shows and ended up playing 124. Um, the year before it was 117, so it's, it's gradually working its way up there. I, doing all my own booking and uh, organizing my own tours, everything you know has pretty much been out of pocket. Um, but I, I, I'm doing what I love, absolutely, and uh, it just brings me a lot of, of joy. My last tour was in 22, the fall of 22, and that was uh, exactly seven weeks on the road, coast to coast across Canada. Uh, that was my third cross Canada tour in, uh, gosh, four years, wow. so yeah. How does having a record label change the game for you, or does it? I think it will, uh, to an extent. I'm, I'm already completely booked up pretty much for the summer. Uh, I will have some Sundays available for in case there are festivals, etc. cetera. But um, where it will really help, I think, is in gaining access to festivals, also getting merch out there. Uh, I currently don't really have any other than CDs, so that's something that uh, Mitch Bigger and I will be working on, is getting me into that kind of realm of the business. Um, and I think the biggest thing too is he can really pitch my music to radio, to perhaps TV, uh, movies, etc. That's the dream. That's where you know an artist can really, a songwriter can make money. Is if your music is used commercially for something. Now you've released two albums before this. Can you tell us a little bit about those albums when they came out and if your style has changed over the years? Sure. You know the first one was a country album, which is kind of funny considering I was really a more of a rock fan. Um, but when I started writing, it, it just kind of came out that way. You know, the thing about country music is it, it invokes feeling. You know, people write about their feelings and, and uh, you know, so Not Going Back uh, was my first album recorded in Nashville. And I had only been singing for seven months when I recorded that album. So truly a newbie at it. I was a drummer for many years in bands in Woodstock, where I lived, and then when I moved to Fredericton, I was playing drums in a couple of blues bands. And um, I love drumming, still love drumming, but rarely get the opportunity now. But found myself in Nashville doing an album of 10 original songs. And um, co-wrote a song for my daughter, Christy, who was born with profound autism. And that song has now gone around the world and become known as the anthem for autism and has been translated into several different languages, etc. So um, I've always had a, a keen interest in helping out anyone, you know, getting publicity or whatever, not publicity so much, but <laughs> assistance for people living with autism and their families. Mm. And um, so that was a great experience. Uh, my first album. It took 10 years, literally to the day, <laughs> literally to the day, uh, from when I did my Nashville album to doing my second album. 
and that was recorded in PEI and St. John, New Brunswick with Paul Milner, who's a wonderful producer and who's become a, a good friend. And uh, so uh, that got, you know, a lot of good reviews. Um, not a terrible amount of airplay, but there are certain songs from that that people, you know, they certainly sing along with when I'm performing. And that was Free Wheeling. Free Wheeling, and yes. And how did it, how did you evolve as an artist from album one to album two? Definitely my voice improved, <laughs> just with use, I think. Uh, Free Wheeling is more of a, a blues and classic rock kind of feeling album, although there are a couple of kind of folkish songs on there as well. I like a lot of different music. I'm, I can't be pigeonholed into just, oh, your country, mm. or your classic rock, or your blues, because I do, I write music that you know, encompasses all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and I enjoy a lot of different kinds of music. So um, now the last two songs that I recorded, uh, which was done this previous summer, right in Memorancook, New Brunswick, at uh, Pumpkin Patch Studios. Great, great spot. Um, the first one, the release from that, was called True Soulmate, which it's, it's kind of a real rocking country song. And uh, my current release, which I'm really excited about, is it's country, but it has a reggae vibe. It's got that reggae beat but it's got fiddle in it, and uh, it's, it's a really fun, upbeat song. Well, I'd love so. to hear you play that now. Uh, tell us what the name of the okay. single is, and uh, please take it away. Well, it's called, Wish I Could Write That Song. <laughs> and it goes kind of like this. Well, I wish I could write that song That could help this whole world to get along One that makes people smile Forget the troubles for a while Fix everything that's wrong Yes, I wish I could write that song To make everyone feel like they belong Take away all the pain, just let good karma remain. Fix everything that's wrong. Oh, I'm a sinner just like you have made some people cry. No, I'll never be perfect, but I'll try. The best that I can to always lend a helping hand. Leave this world a better place when I die. write that song that could help this whole world to get along one that makes people smile with the troubles for a while fix everything that's wrong got to throw away our stubborn pride let forgiveness be our guide nobody's perfect can't you see it always breaks a mother's heart when her children grow apart and discord divides a family oh i wish i could write that song that could Help this whole world to get along. One that makes people smile, forget the troubles for a while, and fix everything that's wrong. Well, I wish I could write that song. Yeah. I wish we had a studio audience. <laughs> I think you did write that song. Oh, well, thank you. 
What do you Thank pull you. on when you're writing? I know you talk about your daughter and uh, life experiences, but is it like therapy when you're writing a song? I think to be a singer-songwriter is such a huge accomplishment, but what does it do to you when you put together a song? Is there a therapeutic process in the journey? Absolutely. It, it, um, usually it is drawn from my own personal experiences. Uh, for instance, probably my next uh, recording is going to be about a song that I wrote for my dad. Um, it was on the anniversary of his birthday, and he had passed away several years before. And just, you know, thinking of him, missing him. And so I wrote a song for him. And uh, so I think that's probably going to be my next recording. Um, and, you know, I've written a couple of songs in the past. They're just kind of fluff and they're just fun tunes for uh, whatever reason. I had come up with a melody and thought, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll make some fun words to go with it sort of thing. But I, I find, in retrospect, looking back on what I write, I like to write about um, positive things. I, I like to have kind of a positive message and um, I think my biggest goal as a songwriter and a performer and singer is just to be able to, to touch people's lives in a positive way with my music. And, um, you know, it just breaks my heart the way the world is. We're, we're a broken world mm -hmm. today. So I just want to to do positive songs and, you know, maybe not always happy ones, but with a positive message. Um, on my last album, I did a song, Attitude of Gratitude, because I think that's one of the most important things that we can have as individuals is maintain a, an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Because especially, I mean, we live in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. I mean, how fortunate are we? You know, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. New Brunswick is a beautiful province. Um, Canada, yeah, we've got our problems, but this is a magnificent country, and we are so fortunate compared to so many in the world. And uh, I don't ever want to lose sight of that or take that for granted. Another thing that's really interesting about you and your music career is that a lot of your success happened not before the age of 30. A lot of even becoming a singer <laughs> happened later. When I was and it's 46. So inspiring. Can you tell us a little bit about what led to you coming into your own in music at 46? It was really a, a, a crisis situation with my, my profoundly autistic daughter, Christy. Uh, she was born with Turner Syndrome, and she was diagnosed then with autism when she was three and a half. And, uh, excuse me, uh, Turner Syndrome has affected her health, but autism, of course, has been her biggest challenge and, and mine as a mother, for sure. Um, so <laughs> what got me into to doing music was, I, mean, I was working as a bookkeeper, had a full-time job, a pension, all of those wonderful things at an engineering firm in Fredericton. And I just, uh, I knew that music was my passion. And I was really, really missing playing music. I had been a drummer in several bands and um, I needed to get back into music. And then in 2007, I was in a total crisis situation with my daughter and my doctor, God love her, put me off work and said, look, you know, this is just too much. And Christy was in, in the hospital for months and months in the psych ward, um, being medically restrained. And while we tried to find a place for her to go because she was too much for me to, to handle at home. And so she said, I know you're a drummer, go home and beat the crap out of your drums, right? You know, and, uh, but it was the guitar hmm. that I picked up and I mean, I. I had taught myself to play guitar as a child, but it wasn't something that I really turned to at all. But uh, I did. I started really like playing my guitar every day and um, got into to writing songs. 
and um, didn't have any confidence in myself as a singer whatsoever. But uh, the lead singer of the band that I was playing drums in at the time uh, asked me if I would accompany her on guitar at a fundraising event for a women's shelter. And I said, I'd love to. And at the time, I knew somebody who was going through a similar situation, you know, was in a very abusive relationship, had been introduced to drugs, prostitution, etc., to support the drug habit. And so I wrote a song in one night called Not Going Back. And that was the start of it. Um, seven months later, I found myself in Nashville recording my first album wow. and wrote, also co-wrote, I'm In Here, which was the song that I wrote, that was written for my daughter, Christy. So wow. um, that's what got me into it at the age of 46. And I find it so hard to believe that you didn't believe in your own voice because I no. think you have one of the most distinct voices. I can hear your voice. It's not just a good voice. It is a signature voice where I can hear you on the other side of town in the summer when the <laughs> venues are outside and we know that's Kathy and we have to walk by. I just can't believe that you didn't recognize that in yourself, but I guess uh, no. we all have our own journey to where we're going. We do, absolutely. You know, it, it's so easy and so trite to say, oh, you know, if I could go back and change this, I would. And, and of course, we all have regrets. We're human beings. We make mistakes. We have regrets. And, but I can honestly say right now that I love where I'm at right now. I've never been happier in my life than I have been in the last three and a half years. And if I had to go through everything again to be where I am right now, then I wouldn't change anything. What's your advice to musicians trying to make it I'm so impressed by how you handle your own career, booking your own shows, doing this full time. Uh, obviously, you're navigating uh, an ever-changing world of the digital age and music, and we navigate that with television, let me tell you. It oh. is not anything I don't think anyone would envy, is f trying to figure out how to continue making it. But what are the challenges these days? For me, technology, I, you know, I, I've called my laptop a few names over the years. <laughs> I'm definitely not a techno geek for sure. Uh, so that's my challenge. Even you know, keeping up with social media, um, you know, Twitter and all those things. And I don't know how to tweet. I you know, so I just actually within the last month have hired a social media expert to help me out with doing posters and, and things like that because that's not my area of expertise and I don't pretend for it to be. I love to play music, I love to sing, I love to write songs. Um, and so I recognize what my strengths and my weaknesses are. But it is a challenge and you have to be very, very determined and you have to persevere. I'll tell you, I came so close to bankruptcy I, you know, it was this close because I invested everything I had into doing albums mm -hmm. and promoting them. And, you know, it, when COVID hit, you know, on March 1st, four mm -hmm. years ago, I had over 80 gigs already booked for the year. They were gone, just like that. My entire livelihood, no other income. It's like, how am I going to survive? What do I do? Well, I'll tell you, thank God for the CERB. Mm -hmm. That's what got me through. And I did not abuse it because the minute I could get out playing again, I did. And I cut it off. You know, I said, I, this is, I, I want to make my living justifiably mm -hmm. doing music and what I love. And, and I have to say, in the last couple of years, things have really turned around. And now I am making my living, and I'm finally in a place where I'm debt free, and I can just focus on the music. Now, aside so, from people going to your shows as a way to support, where do they find music online to, to buy songs and to follow you as well, to see where you're playing next? Where's the best place to go? Well, I have a website. Um, kathyhutch.com, it's very simple. 
and I'm on all of the social media platforms, Spotify, Amazon, etc. But I just actually last week signed on to one called Bandcamp on the advice of Mitch, who is with the, the uh, record label, where the artist actually makes 80% of the download, whereas with all of the others, Spotify, Amazon Music, whatever, any of them, the artist makes less than a quarter of a cent per download. So, you know, I, I get my big deposit of about 40 cents every month. <laughs> I think these are the things, though, we at right. home don't always know about no. how the digital no. age is affecting uh, so the artists. Merch, you know, that's why um, even though tours cost a lot of money and mine were, were completely self-funded and self-directed and self-booked, um, but an artist pretty much has to sell merch mm -hmm. in order to survive. They've got to sell... It's no longer CDs. I mean, I do have them, and I do still sell mm -hmm. to the odd person who still has that, you know, dinosaur called a CD player. Um, but now it's more, you know, the blue, Bluetooth or the memory sticks or whatever. And um, so I feel ridiculous doing this, but I am going to have some T-shirts <laughs> made up. As you should. I know that your version of fans, Swifties, or the beehive for Beyonce, you have the Hutch Heads. Uh, it's, it's a very <laughs> big online phenomenon. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel God. like your merch will do very well. Oh my Lord, you know, when I learned that this fall, so, you know, a couple of fans come up to me and they said, well, you know, like, there's a group around town that we all call ourselves the Hutch Heads. You know, we follow you and, and they do, God love them. And it's, but it just strikes me as so funny. I'm like, oh my God, you know. Um. I can't I, imagine. I know, I know quite a few, so. <laughs> it's too funny. <laughs> My dear friend Susan being uh -huh. uh, maybe up in the top five for sure. Oh, that's, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And, you know, that's the thing I love about St. Andrews is I, I feel such a part of a community here and just so much love. And, um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to play gig after gig and, and see those familiar faces and they're so loyal, right? Well, I love that right now I get to be your one-man audience for a special performance of yet another single that we should get on Bandcamp if we're to download. Right. Um, tell us what it is and please close out the show, Kathy. Okay, well, I love this song. This is called True Soulmate and I have to tell the little bit of a story about it. Um, I've been in a lot of relationships in my life. I've always looked for that soulmate connection. And, um, and it didn't, you know, for whatever reason, relationships didn't work out. And so I think finally four years ago, I just said, I'm done, I'm done, never again, never again. And I was very content. I was very, very happy being single. Wasn't looking for anyone, didn't feel I needed anyone and had truly found peace and contentment just within myself. Uh, my partner reached out to me. She was a fan who had been following me for about a year on music sites. And she reached out and she said, would you consider doing a live show on, on uh, you know, video or whatever? And I said, well, I've already done a couple. So we started a communication we didn't meet, meet each other face to face for about a month. We just talked every day. And uh, anyway, from the first time we met, I knew I've met my true soulmate. So this is her song. Tried too hard too many times to play the game called love was never dealt a winning hand nothing quite fit my glove the lessons taught were hard ones yeah but from them i did grow had to learn to trust in god have faith and let it go now you're my sunshine in the rain you're my shelter 
in darkness. You're the light that leads me home. All the angels sent you to me, and the cards foretold a fate. When I finally learned to let it go, I found my true soulmate. Despite the storms of rage I've never felt so joyful Or so free to turn the page On all the heartaches of the past My life's begun anew I found my true soul made at last The gift that I call you Now you're my sunshine in the rain You're the light that keeps me warm All the angels sent you to me And the cards foretold our fate When I finally learned to let it go I found my true soulmate My true soulmate For my every song The notes I've not yet sung yeah. Oh, you're my sunshine in the rain You're my shelter You're the light that leads me home All the angels sent you to me And the cards foretold our fate When I finally learned to let it go I found my true soulmate Oh, my true soulmate